Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This system here, and uh, it doesn't. Uh, it, 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 it usually, what's supposed to happen with uh, no? I why do I always have to explain technology to you that doesn't work? You know, uh, what happens is I'm using a different machine. I'm using my old cheese grater. I'll tell you what happened to the other machine in a second. And um, uh, this one, usually, if I hit the command button, it should go back and forth between pictures, but it doesn't. See. For some reason, it has decided, see, it should, should do this, okay? But it doesn't do that. And uh, the other control button should maybe allow me to go back. Oh, and that one works. Well, it doesn't work going back the other way. Well, okay, anyway. It does it work? No, it doesn't work now, see? And, I, I, well, anyway, I don't care whether it works or not. The only problem is all night long I'm going to have to keep going back and forth uh, with this, uh, with clicking and so on. Eh, it's a pain in the ass. Anyway, uh, and I'm going to have to do it this way for uh, about, uh, let's see, about a week, maybe more. I took my old machine, my old machine, my new machine that is the other machine, uh, down to, uh, oh, God, I'm sniffling now down to the geniuses at the uh, Apple store. I got to tell you, this guy I dealt with today was a genius, actually. I mean, he went through all the readings and the of, of all the failings and so on that I had. I, as you know, what I have as a problem was a machine that just would randomly reboot itself. We, I don't know why. It's, called, it's what's called a kernel panic. Anyway, it had a kernel panic, on any number of occasions, and would uh, do it at random moments, and I couldn't figure out when or why. So he was able to look at the at the logs of, of the crashes and be able to kind of suss out what might be happening or not be happening. Uh, uh, for instance, customer is returning after depot repair for intermittent shutdown issues. A depot repair was when we sent it down to Houston. Remember that? A uh, computer was practically rebuilt at Depot after unsuccessful repair in store. Computer programs have been restored. Many kernel panics are logged in the customer provided printouts in case they were not available in the console. Device may restart during any task and when computer is idle and no programs are running. See, now you can know exactly what's going on here. Customers turned off all non-Apple processes and replicated crashes at home with nothing running. Computer has crashed during the middle of his live show he produces online. Steps to reproduce, unable to reproduce shutdown at this time because it's random. And the hardest thing to fix is something that's random, okay? Uh, and it says, hardware diagnostic show all hardware is passing, kernel panics logged, and then it goes to what the logs were and what was having a problem. And it was uh, a lot of stuff that was, uh, was Mac-related. Here's the part I like, though. It says, cosmetic condition, like new. This thing, yeah, it does. It looks like I just bought it yesterday from the, from the store. So now here's what they did the last time I went down there. They took my machine and they said, we can't repair it here because it's just getting too complicated. Let me turn on the, uh, on the air sign. Uh, girlfriend's happier when that sign in back of me is on. Okay. Um, anyway, so I, um, um, uh, I took it down to them because I was having problems with the, with the graphics board. Uh, with the graphics. And they replaced the graphics board, but there was some heat problems. So they then said, we, we've got to send this down. We've got to send it off-site down to our main repair place in Houston, Texas. I said, how long is that going to take? They said, oh, we overnight the stuff down there. And they overnight it back. So it said it could take up to a week. Okay, so they send it down there. 
it comes back, I got to tell you, it comes back and I have a list of all the things they did, okay? And what they did is they replaced almost everything in the computer. They replaced the memory, they replaced the CPU, uh, they replaced, uh, what else did they replace? The memory, CPU, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, oh yeah, the two, the two display cards. They replaced almost everything inside that computer. The only thing they didn't replace was the logic board. And uh, probably in doing this, they did something and uh, did something that screwed up the logic board. This guy thinks, because he says, proposed resolution sent to off-site repair facility for further evaluation and repair of logic board under repeat repair, meaning repeat repair means I don't, I don't pay for it. I, I, they put a, they, after this is through, they will have put $4,000 worth of work into this thing, and I paid uh, 100, uh, 360 bucks, something like that. So they took the machine, and they're sending it back down to Houston, Texas. I, I wish I could get the air miles that this machine has had. This machine has been on a trip to Houston and back now. This is the second time. Uh, and I'm jealous because I don't ever get a vacation, anything like that. So anyway, I'm without that machine, so I'm with my old machine, and somehow uh, the program I'm using, which is called... Uh, uh, OS, uh, OBS Studio, uh, doesn't seem to want to dissolve back and forth. See? If I click it, it doesn't do it, right? So anyway, so we, we will just have to uh, live with it. I can, I can go into settings, and I can say hotkeys, and I can say here, uh, clear the quick, uh, the, uh, quick transition, okay? And I can go to boom, and then I can do that. And now I have okayed it, and I've upgraded it, and let's see what happens. Let's see if I push if I push that. There it goes. See, it works, but it doesn't work again when I come back. So, eh, see, eh, well, anyway. So uh, that's the problem with using this machine. It's not it's a bad machine. It's just that it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, and somehow I didn't have any problem. Uh, with the switcher last night, but I have a problem with the switcher tonight. Uh, maybe I have to maybe go off of that. No, no, no. I have no idea. Anyway, so I'm gonna. It's gonna be a rough night for me because I'm gonna have to sh sh push back and forth, back and forth. And, and maybe when I do this again next week, it won't be a problem. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know. What? Why am I complaining about any of this? Why am I doing this? You know, why am I sitting here working with a machine that really can't handle all the traffic that I have to do? Because once the show starts, once we start getting calls on our citizen panel, guess what happens to me? Okay, guess what happens to me? Uh, uh, I start going out of sync. Why? I have no idea. All the people who are calling me are in sync. I am out of sync. Okay, and after a while, it, there's about a four-second lag between when I raise my hand and when it raises it, my hand on the on the video. So uh, please don't pay attention to that. It's going to be that way until I get this other machine back. Provided when I get that other machine back, it works. And if it doesn't work anymore, I'm just giving up the ghost on everything. Although I was thinking of going out and buying a really powerful PC and just doing the whole thing on a PC because. Uh, it seems to always work well on a PC. But anyway, this is my studio here. This is, you know, it's a different shot than we used to have over here, uh, which is, uh, I mean, I, I wish I could take the camera and, and move it around and show you the room and so on. But if I move it, I then have to reset it up, and it's a, it's a pain in the ass. So we just have this one static shot of me, Okay. So anyway, uh, listen, I, uh, I, just, I found something, and I'm going to play it, and I put it up on, on YouTube to see if they would say there was any kind of a copyright problem with it. And so far, they have found no copyright problem with uh, this particular video I wanted to show you. And it's only about two minutes long, but I wanted to show it to you because uh, it, uh, uh, it, it shows you something out of my career 
that a lot of people doubt, okay? And, and it, it makes no sense at all. And I was going to bring it in and show it to you, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it is one. I, make, I got, uh, I won two, I've won two Emmys in my life. Um, I'm an Emmy Award winning talk show host. No, I'm an Emmy Award winner. Uh, I won an award. One of the awards was for being a talent and a and uh, little productions that I did for a, a series on Channel Seven in San Francisco called uh, Login TV. Uh, and uh, it was I think it was called Login TV. Yeah, uh, it was called Log uh, Login TV. And and. Uh, uh, I did these bits, and we put them up for, uh, we did a, a demo reel, and we sent it to the Emmy people, and uh, I won for best uh, talent uh, on a entertainment program, whatever, and for me, I, I don't, I can't remember, it says it on the, on the Emmy. Now, the other one I got the year before, and a lot of people don't believe this, and they have urged me over and over again to return this Emmy because they consider it fraudulent. Uh, as you know, I have no history of doing sports, all right? We know that. I, I don't play sports. I don't watch sports. I, to this day, do not know how the game of football is played. I swear to you, on my mother's grave, which I have yet to put a tombstone on, by the way. But uh, on my mother's grave, I testify that I do not know how football is played. And I've had some of the biggest people in the business. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Rice, the uh, football player of the San Francisco 49ers, tried to teach me football, and I, I, he couldn't do it. And uh, who was the other big player? Not Joe Montana, but the other guy. Uh, i to remember his name now. He tried. I had major football players trying to teach me how football works, and and the problem is that when you when you when you when you're trying to figure out how football works, they start out with something like, well, you have to get so many downs, and then they have to explain what a down is, and by the time you get that far into it, it's too deep. Now I know what you're saying, because you all know how football is played, you have no problem with it. I do. Okay, so. Anyway, I want to get my head a little bit closer to the top here. There we go. Now is that okay? That's fine. That's good. That that way is fine. All right. Anyway, so uh, I don't I don't know how sports are played. Uh, a lot of sports. I know how baseball is played. I always liked baseball. I was never a fan of baseball. I love the history of baseball, and I love going to a ballpark and hanging out with friends. But so far as what's going on on the field, I couldn't give a diddly squat. And I don't know who's leading in the American League this year, who's leading in the National League and stuff like that. I don't know any of that. But I like baseball, and I know how it's played. I understand what you got to do. And it actually, baseball's a, a very simple game. But more than that, it is the most mathematically perfect game ever created, all right? Because the mathematics, if, if, if those bases were one inch either way, it would change the whole nature of the game. That's true. I mean, I hate to say that, uh, uh, but, but it, it's true. It is the most mathematically perfect game ever created. The bases are just the perfect amount apart. It all makes for a great game. And the history and the lore behind the game is terrific. I think... Football has a somewhat brutish history of players who beat their wives and uh, 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 also start bar fights. But baseball, you got just a bunch of drunks who hang out with whores. All right. So anyway, that's uh, that, that's the uh, that's the problem there. Okay. So uh, I, I'm um, uh, I love baseball. All right, but football, I don't understand. Well, the, the point I'm making is when it comes to sports, I really don't know diddly squat. So all of a sudden, guess what? I get an Emmy for sports. Now, what did I get an Emmy for sports for? That's what everybody says, and that's what you're about to see, okay? Um, because what I did was I uh, was part of a show that was on KPIX-TV. 
Every year they have a race in San Francisco called the Beta Breakers. It goes from the ferry building in San Francisco all the way out to the ocean and I think close to the Cliff House. I don't know exactly where it ends up. Um, but it goes, it's called Beta Breakers. And um, every year, Channel 5 covers it, all right? And so this one year they were covering it. They asked me what I'd like to produce uh, uh, you know, while it's going on, something, uh, uh, maybe a little bit that they could then run in their wrap-up show, which went on later that day after the race. Uh, and, and so what we would do is we would go out, shoot the damn thing, uh, and uh, then we'd run back to the station, and we would edit it really quickly and put it all together, and hopefully we had a nice piece that they could put in the show. So... What they did, what we decided to do is we were going to call it a the Lazy Man's Guide or something. I can't remember what it was now. The Lazy Man's Guide to the Beta Breakers, okay? The lazy way to do the Beta Breakers or to be involved in it. And so they hired me uh, three strippers from a, from a, from a local uh, strip joint to be in this thing, which you, you'll see. And um, this big limo, which was... Uh, you know, a fairly expensive prop, but hey, it was, it was you know, Channel 5 in San Francisco. They had money, all right? Uh, and um, so we got this uh, limo, and so now I've got this friend at the time. His name was Tony Tantillo. He still, his name is still Tony Tantillo. It's just I haven't talked to him in years because every time I tried to call him, I never hear back from him, although at that time, he was like my best friend. And he did, he was the, he was the green grocer on Channel 5. And uh, so I show up, right? And he says, oh, you're here, Alex, because he was doing the Beta Breakers. I said, yeah, they hired me to, you know, do some bit for the Beta Breakers. And then he went, uh, oh, oh, that's wonderful. That's terrific. And I said, yeah, I like it. It's, gonna, it's lovely. And he, he said, okay. So then I go downstairs, and there are the three strippers uh, and the limo, Okay. And uh, also, we I think uh, there were some props like huge baskets of fruit and things like that in there. And Tony comes down to go get in a car that's waiting for him. Maybe he has to take his own car to go to the Beta Breakers. And he sees me, and I've got the limo and the three strippers. And he said, how the fuck did you manage to get that? Well, I needed them. <laughs> that's all there was to it. So here is the piece, and I actually have to start it uh, here. Uh, here is the piece that we ran on the Beta Breakers uh, wrap-up show. This won me, along with the other people who were on the wrap-up show, because the wrap-up show that won, but when something wins, the individuals in the show all win an Emmy. All right? So this is what won me my sports Emmy. Bennett, you, you saw the easy way to run that race. <laughs> now let me give you some helpful hints. First, you gotta get a corporate sponsor. Shit, shit, shit. Hey, uh, sir, the, the fat boy's with me. Come on. So you wanna be my corporate sponsor? Yeah. Come on. Hi. Who's the sponsor? Cheese. Uh, no, I will not be bought. I cannot be bought. What is down? I will not be bought out. I, I, I will not compromise my principles. Easy cheese, cheese platter, delight cheese. Here's a trick to get you through those long lines in the porta potties. We're all going. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Out of there. A lot of people are in this race just to meet people, and there are several techniques you can use to do that. My particular favorite is a dog. The smaller, the better. Come and get to love. Come and get to love. Can I pet my dog? Anybody want to pet my dog? Anybody want to meet and pet my dog? Oh, look. Yeah, so uh, what's your name? Sandy. Uh-huh, where do you live? I live in San Pablo. Uh, are you single? No. Oh. <laughs> Don't touch my dog. It's not working. Maybe I need a cat. Get your dog here. Get your dog here. One free dog right here. <laughs> About halfway through the race, you know, people start running out of energy, and what they need is food. You want the uh, crispy drumsticks? Hey! 
Well, I lost my sponsor. Come on, let me in. But at least I got my cheese and I got my dog. Hey, that's our cheese. And that's our dog. All right, thanks, Alex, for those uh, wonderful tips. Uh, I'm joined by a friend here now, Dan. This is okay. That was our, uh... <laughs> and that's what won me. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what won me uh, my uh, Emmy. Okay. Uh, so if you ever doubt that I won an Emmy for something, I just showed you what I won an Emmy for. Uh, let's see, where, where's where's Skype? Oh, there's Skype. Okay. I'm about ready to start up the Skype. Uh, and now this is when I start going out of sync. They're, it all has to do with that. With that other machine I had, I have the power to just do a nice, smooth show. But, you know, I don't have that kind of power now. So uh, uh, we'll uh, just have to um, uh, live with it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, uh, am I, shall I open up the lines? Oh, hell, I'll open up the lines. Anyway, that's how I won my Emmy. Uh, and uh, don't ever doubt it. Okay, now, I did it. I absolutely did it. Uh, let me see here. Let me also turn this uh, uh, up. Okay, we're, uh, we're ready now to take calls. All right. Uh, it's a feel-free night tonight. Let me make sure. i got to use, where are my glasses? Here they are. Uh, it's a feel-free night tonight. Everything on Skype now is small. Um, and also, if you call us and um, I answer and it gets a thing saying your bandwidth is too slow, uh, don't worry about that. Just, I'm, you're going to be hung up on, and then I will call you right back, and then you pick up, and you'll be fine, and we'll find a, a reason to make you a member of our citizen panel. But we're waiting for the first person to call, and Phil is not calling tonight, so it's a Phil-free night, everybody. Uh, which means uh, it's uh, you can get, you, we, we can all blast it away at Trump if we want to without it being stultified in our actions. Anyway, so I'm waiting. This could be the night nobody calls. You know, that, that's always possible. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, Charlie's calling now. Charlie, you see, will not have to be called back because he's the first guy. Uh, it says, avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. Uh, Charlie, uh, turn on your camera. Or let's make wait till we see you here. Okay. Uh, Charlie, uh, I, I want you to know uh, uh, that you're being recorded. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me, uh, Josh oh, okay. yeah, Wheeler. Hold on here. Oh, uh, well, I, now I have to call Josh back. Hold on a second. Uh, Josh Wheeler, add... Uh, and we're calling him, and so he will probably answer, hopefully. We're calling Josh Wheeler. Yes, there, here comes Josh, and let me uh, go here. Let me see, do we have Josh Wheeler? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Josh, all right. There we go. There he is. Yep, there he is. Okay. So if I go uh, to this, see, there, there, there's, uh, there's everybody, and I'm starting to slowly go out of sync. So, <laughs> oh man, yeah. So, did you see my, uh, did you see my award-winning piece? Oh, I see why you won the Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just an Emmy; it's a sports Emmy. Yeah. You know, the last thing in the world anybody would expect. There was a sports reporter in San Francisco. I used to have him on my show every week. And he always used to give me a bad time about that, saying he wanted me to give back the Emmy. That I did not deserve, to, under any conditions, to have a sports Emmy. But I had one. So fuck him. Uh, and uh, anyway, and he was, he was kind of overweight. And we did a show in my bedroom once, just from my bedroom, the whole show from my bed. And he came and sat on the edge of it and broke it. He broke it. And it was so embarrassing, it was ridiculous. But anyway. <laughs> By the way, if you want to call us, the numbers are right down here. Uh, Gabnet Live, if you're using Skype, there's a phone number down there if you want to make the rest of us be pissed off at you because you're using a phone instead. of. We can just call you Tim. It's what we can do. Um, anyway, how you doing, Josh? 
Good, how are you? Yeah. Well, we're waiting for other people to call so we can fill up the panel so we can see right now I'm in sync. So if another couple of you call, I will go out of sync. And, and that will give you a feeling of, of great satisfaction. Okay? <laughs> you know? No no fill today? No fill today. No, no. It's a fill-free uh, Friday, which is, you know, it's fine. Usually we get more people when Phil isn't here. And we just, you know, we just went to the phones. It, the, people could suddenly go, oh, there's no Phil. I'll call. You know, so anyway, you people, you can call now. Because there's no fill. It's a fill-free night. Okay? Do it so you don't... For what do they used to say on television? Call now so you don't forget. You remember that? You know? Yeah. And they wanted to sell you something. Call now so you don't forget. Well, I don't know if I'm going to remember this anyway. I don't. I can't even remember that you just told me not to, to call now so I won't forget. But anyway, so... So my machine is down, uh, as you can see here is back down in Texas, or is being shipped back to Texas for more work. If they replace the logic board, they may as well have just given me a new machine. Yeah. Because all that's left is the power supply. <laughs> you know? The power supply, oh yeah, and the they may replace this for all we know. I have, a, you know, the thing doesn't have a hard drive in it. It has one terabyte of memory. That's one of the reasons it works so fast. And um, if they replace that and and the logic board, there will be nothing in that computer that came with it. Hmm. So let's see what happens. Marjorie is betting that they will send me a refurb. That they will just say, forget it. Here's a refurb. We know this one works. Have fun. All right? Hmm. But we were looking for what software could cause it or whatever. The other night, I finally took it into another room after the show the other night that failed, put the cheese grater back into operation here, then went there and didn't turn anything on, didn't have any peripherals attached to it, didn't have any programs running, and it sat there and it uh, rebooted itself. So there was something definitely wrong. I know, that's all boring, folks. Who gives a shit? So anyway, so um, is there anything I'm missing out on in the news today? Because I didn't watch the news at all. No, me either. You know, uh, I mean, is some was there something about uh, uh, Giuliani saying that he was going to go to the Ukraine <laughs> and do something? I I don't know. I I. There I was some kind of a headline about that yesterday, mm -hmm. and I didn't really understand the headline. That was all that I read, be just because it popped up on my phone. They send me those things, and it didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I thought, should I read the article? And then I thought, you know what? It's an article about Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> and I really have to take a shit. Let me so, see. You know, I mean... <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just didn't oh, worry wait, about here it. Comes, so I, oh, I don't know. Maybe he'll go and stay there. Here comes Jeff Stein, and of course it'll say missed call. So then I have to call Jeff back. This is all. This is all. This is a separate problem. This that folks has nothing to do with my uh, with my uh, uh, situation with uh, uh, the machine. This just has to do. Is, is Jeff on? It says calling Jeff Stein. So he hasn't answered yet. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what's up with that now yeah uh, uh i have no idea you know there's some some with sort the of a glitch. glitch well i'm calling jeff but jeff's not answering oh they're calling jeff stein jeff i'm calling you okay and it won't it won't take you because i i'm gonna try you again jeff mm -hmm. just pay attention i'm well now i've lost him son of a bitch yeah, you, I, i've just gotten used to the fact that it'll disconnect and then you'll call me right, you know, right back. No, here, I, here. Until that gets fixed, everyone's just going to have to get that as the new uh, the new normal, wow, I suppose. I, I don't have Jeff's... Uh, uh, okay, Jeff Stein unavailable, it says. Jeff, you got to answer your call, okay? Here you go. I'm calling you again. Now answer it, okay? Just answer it. Very simple. <laughs> 
What is what comes up? It says something, and it says join, right? Yeah. So he should be getting that. There we go. Well, now he's trying to call again. Uh, Jeff, come on, Jeff, just answer the fucking call. Oh, Jeff joined. Okay, you there, Jeff? It says, uh, Jeff Stein. Are you there, Jeff? Uh, we, uh, I got a little thing on the screen that said he joined, and right after that, one that said he left. It's almost like he, he, he uh, picked up and he didn't realize it, and he was hanging up at the same time or something. Oh boy, oh, Jeff, 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 come on! I have to send somebody out there to his house. To... Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to call him again. Anybody live nearby? Here, Jeff, I'm calling you again. Now just answer the goddamn Skype, okay? <laughs> Remember the 30 second delay, you know, by the time you told him he called you and he yeah, hears it. I'm calling seconds. you, Jeff. You should be seeing a thing that will say join and uh, you're not, you're not, uh, he's uh, trying to call again, is he? No. Calling Jeff Stein, calling Jeff Stein, it says, and Jeff, oh, there's Jeff finally, yeah, I think. I think we got Jeff. Jeff, are you there? Answer the goddamn yeah. visually. Turn, I can hear you. Now turn on your camera. By the time you call me, call you. I'm calling you, Jeff. Oh, geez. And he's got his audio on. And, uh, there. Uh, there we uh, What What is that, Jeff? Are you there? There's Jeff. Okay. Let me try. Uh, well, Jeff well, isn't here. a snapshot. Huh? No. No, there's a problem you've got, Jeff. Jeff, what is his problem? Do you notice he's grayed out, kind of? Yeah, but I can see him like the shadow of him there. Yeah, and he's uh, not coming up. He's not coming up on here. He looks fine on my screen. Well, I I don't get it. That's good. No, oh, okay. no. I see my picture. No, but we don't see you, Jeff. All right, let's see what I can do. Let me. Uh, no, we we see you, but you're you're blue. You're blued out. Oh, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang up on you and wait for me to call you back and then answer, okay? Okay. I'm okay. Up. Remove from call. Okay, there we go. Now, I will go plus, and I will go Jeff Stein, and I will go add. These, these, this fucking Skype. What a bunch of fucking <laughs> maroons. All right? And I'm calling Jeff. And, and there he goes. And there he's answered. Okay, now let me see now here. you're perfect. Now let me see here. Let me let me see here. Let me cancel that, and then let me go in here and double click on that, and I will probably be able to see Jeff Stein. Here we go. Okay. Right. Yeah, Jeff. You know, with, with this new thing, when we call, when when you call and and you don't we you we don't we don't get you immediately. You got to just wait for us to call you back, and when yeah. you see that join, join us. Okay. Anyway, what I was going to do is I was going to, I was, when all this was. I am join. Huh? No, you're fine. I don't have to join. Don't worry about it. You're on. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. I don't see anything. Well, you're on. We see you. We, we hear you. Yeah. Uh, oh, let me see here. Drudge. Let me see here. I want to, because Drudge is where I'll find out all the, there we go. Drudge report. There we go. Let's see here. What, what does Drudge say? Lord of Amazon wants Moon's water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's that all about? Am I missing something there? He's going for the ice that's underneath the surface of the moon. He's going for the ice that's under the surface of the moon. Yeah. Why don't we just get the water here? <laughs> Does he want to bottle the moon water? Is that what it's all about? You know? Doesn't make I didn't sense. Hear about to this. Have been removed from the call by another participant. No, no, don't don't worry about that, Pam. Don't worry, Pam. We've we've got him. We've got Let's him. Let's not complicate the issue. He's all bummed out. He can't see you. He can't I'm blind. You can't see us. No, he can't see. Oh. Well, I don't know why you can't see us. Okay, wow. let's hang up one more time. <laughs> and I will call you right back, and it will it will it, it'll it'll tell you that I'm calling you. Okay. Yeah, I'm off. Okay. No, no, don't you turn yourself off. Let me turn you. Oh, off. he did already. He did already. Okay. Now 
We're going to call Jeff again. This is going to, the name of this program tonight is Call Jeff Stein. Okay. <laughs> now we're call, it says Calling Jeff Stein, and he should be here any moment. Yes, there he is. Now can you see us? No. Well, then you, you've got something that you haven't. Something got. weird. Well, what's on your screen? Oh, he hung up on it. Oh, yeah, boy. when you call me back, I have to either answer as an audio or a video call. Yeah. And I always, you know, hit the camera for the video call button. He may be picking up as an oh, audio call. Well, here, here comes Tony Magno. And Tony can certainly master this. He's pretty good <laughs> at it. Let's see here. Tony Magno. Okay. He's been on all week. Huh? Yeah. He's been on all week, so he knows how to do it. Okay. So now we're calling Tony Magno. Uh, and um, let me see here. Number four. Let me see. I want to get rid of the, that. Five. Three. Three. There we go. Okay. All right. Tony, are you there, Tony? Yes. Okay, would you turn there on is. would you turn on your camera, Tony? There we go. Okay, now well, let me let me put you in the number four spot because I had the other spot reserved for Jeff. Uh, let me see here. Um, oh, Jeff's trying to call again. Oh, this is this is a clusterfuck. I hate this. You know. Okay. Um, uh, here is. Uh, let me see here. Five. There we go. Uh, let me uh, put on Jeff. Um, uh, 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 Jeff Stein is not there, so now I will call Jeff Stein. Uh, da, 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 da. Add Jeff Stein. All right. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeffy boy. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You, 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 you can do it. You can do it. Calling Jeff Stein, it says, and then it should say Jeff Stein joined, but he won't. I bet he, I bet he, I bet he is hitting the uh, the speaker and not the camera, and so mm -hmm. therefore he's just getting an audio version of it. Possible. Come yeah. on, Jeff. This is getting boring. Come on. Come he's on, Jeff. Hit the camera to join the call. Yeah, boy. Well, he <laughs> he got he didn't get it. So he, I, I uh, let me. What, what what is this? Uh. Take snapshot. I don't want a fucking snapshot. Let's say all that. <laughs> Why are all these little bells and fucking hooting whistles? Uh, let me once again try to call Jeff and see if Jeff will uh, do anything. Uh, you know, wait a minute, Jeff. Add Jeff. Okay. Now we're ringing you, Jeff. So add, call, uh, answer. Okay. Answer. What? Uh, I'm giving up on this. This is too. I'm sp I've spent ten minutes trying to get Jeff on. Uh, there we go. There's Jeff. I got it. I think yes. I got it. You know why? Because you probably hit the the spe the uh, voice thing instead of the uh, the uh, uh, the camera. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, have, I had help on that. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Hey, I had help on that. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Pam is the literate one when it comes to computers in the family. Oh, yeah. oh, God. oh boy. Well, we spent 10 minutes. We could call this show trying to get Jeff on the air. Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> A, well, this is great, Jeff. great broadcasting, isn't it, folks? Don't you enjoy this? But look, I'm still in sync. No, wow. Wow. <laughs> This, more so than last it, night, but I think it takes one more person, and then I start going out of sync. I can see your whole face. Huh? Maybe it is Phil that drags it down. <laughs> it could be. It could very well be. It could be that there's a plot on his part to make me. Uh, it's like the curse of Phil. Alex. Yeah, yeah. The He's curse of Phil. Wise. Well, we have uh, Charlie. We have uh, uh, Josh uh, Whedon. Uh, we have uh, 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 Jeff Stein, and we have Tony Magno, and then we have me. Okay, Emmy Award winning <laughs> me. Okay, uh, let me see. Hey, it was your idea to get the girls. Uh, yeah, I well, I figured as long as they were going to pay to do this thing, I was going to get my money. And I had to go down and audition them. 
<laughs> as well. So you know that that took uh, took uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, 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 Rob Alfano is calling, so let me oh, call cool. Rob yeah. back. Yeah. Okay, there's Rob, and add him, and I'm sure he will answer right on the button because he's uh, there he is. yeah there he is so he is. you know it's it's very simple if you know what you're doing let me just put uh let me see here you're you're at five Wait a minute. how are you at f you're not a f eh, i don't get this oh i well maybe i'm let me see what the problem is here let me see here uh uh John, rob alfano there we go there's rob okay do we get Rob in there? Uh, his picture up there. We see here. There we go. We got Rob. Okay, there's Rob. Oh, and he's not in his garage where he is usually banned to smoke his cigars. <laughs> no cigar. I had one earlier. So, in front of a picture of a baseball field, which I was talking. Uh, I, I was Yankees. Yeah, Yankee I, Stadium. I was talking. Uh, I, I was talking about baseball I earlier. And I was talking about it as being the most ge geometrically perfect game ever invented. Is that would that be a good accurate description? I believe yeah, so. uh, they want to change it now. They're talking about moving the mound back. Wow. wow. Well, it is, and they so, want to, and yeah. they want to make the bases bigger. Uh, well, first of all. They should not move where the bases are. What people have said no, is that move the bases. if they, they were an inch, the yeah. back. if they were an inch different than they are right now, it would be a whole different game. That's what well, and that's what's going to happen when you make the bases bigger. Yeah, yeah. Why gonna are they going to make it bigger? They, are are they? Is they there, are, those, the are those are those are those those uh, those guys getting uh, eyesight problems? Is that it? No, the guys are getting too tall. They're, too they're, big. Oh really? Oh, well, if, they, if they move the if they move the mound back, you're gonna get more runs. Well, I, yeah, I think they, they want because these guys are throwing uh, they're throwing over a hundred miles an hour. It's not so yeah. rare anymore that um, although they only want to move it back like uh, six six inches or so. Right now it's sixty feet six inches. Yeah. So so you know, why do they kinda, why why do they want to move it back? Well, they're trying to do something to make the game more popular with millennials, I think, and they're just trying. They want to put clocks in the game, and they, they want to just fuck with the game instead of leaving it alone. And it's a great game, and well, that, I'm a purist, though. I'm a purist, so I'm yeah. I'm the so, I mean, they're looking for, and and I'm with you, Rob. I'm not really in favor of most of the stuff, but they're looking for some more offense that is not revolved around the home run. Because the home run is a short action yeah. type of play. I mean, it's what a lot of people want, but baseball is in a phase the last two or three years, and especially this year. Uh, uh, and I mean, I see it in my own team where, you know, guys either walk, hit a home run, or strike out. Yeah. And that literally is making up like 70% of the game yeah. or something like that. I mean, the walk is boring, okay? Yeah. The strikeout is boring. And the home run is excitement that lasts for like two seconds. So two what seconds. they're trying to get is a lot more base hits, you know, uh, balls in the gap, et cetera, so that, you know, there's always runners on base and there's action. And, you know, they're trying to make it, you know, I guess to be a little bit more appealing, like you said. But, I mean, look, everyone's always trying to be football, but there's only one football. I mean, I don't know what else, you know, you, you can't make it. Something that's not, but well, I mean, you talk about you talk about football. Uh, it football is a fast game, right? Okay, baseball, by the nature of how the game is played and what it is, is a slow game. Slowly. I often I often said that going to the ballpark is sitting there with your friends, having a beer, having some hot dogs, gaining some weight, having some good conversation, and occasionally <laughs> something happens out there. You know, yeah, right. uh, and and I guess what the what they're trying to do maybe is create more excitement by this stuff. And and you don't want to change the nature of baseball. What's lovely about baseball? Can I wax poetic about baseball? Yeah, I like um, to me it's a long time. He, no, like if I can wax poetic about baseball for a second, what's so wonderful about baseball is that it is a pastoral event. Okay, that he basically everybody shows up, hangs out at a pasture. 
and watches people play this game, which is a very slow game, and nothing much happens. You know, the guy's waiting to hit the ball, and it doesn't, he doesn't swing at it, and, you know, whatever. It's a slow game, but then all of a sudden there's some real action going on. And then it's back to slow, slow, slow. And you're never going to be able to change that without ruining baseball. Yeah. Video games and, and, and everything flying at people. You know, look at the television screen today. Look at any news program. Look at all everything that's on the screen all at once. Everybody's attention span is really short. And people lose their interest when they sit there and watch, uh, especially when a pitcher works slow. If there's a man on base and the catcher runs out to the mound to have a discussion and then he goes back, then the coach comes out, then he throws over to first base and all that, you know, people just, today's mindset is, yeah, and that's, that's it, you know, and you, you know, they're trying to change a game, make it adaptable. And that's not a very adaptive game in my opinion. And I think all the replay stuff is a bunch of hooey. And now the other day I was watching the Yankee game and instant replay was to help get calls right, not to catch a player who took his foot off the base when he was standing up for a hot well, I mean, you have to really freeze the video to see that his foot came off the base and it happened to have his glove on the back of the player and he was out. That's not what, the, you know, the instant replay was designed to do. And it's sad what's going on. Yeah. Killing it, in my opinion, they're killing the game. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, didn't they, didn't they, did, they did a lot of changes with football over the years to adapt it to uh, fat, making it faster, uh, making it more action filled, all of that. Uh, and I can't speak to football. I feel the same way you do about football. Yeah. I, think I understand the game. I heard you saying you don't know how it's played. I played, you know, football as a kid, so I understand the game, but I just don't, it, it just never appealed to me. Yeah. Yeah. It never appealed to me either. Uh, uh it's, it, it's a rather loutish game so far as I'm concerned, you know, has no finesse. Baseball, no baseball has finesse. Baseball you want me to tell you the difference between baseball and football? Uh, football uh, is well, how can I describe? Sounding like George Carlin here. Uh, football it, is a game. <laughs> Love that routine. Uh, uh, foot, uh, foot, football is a game in in which uh, brute force is the order of the day. Baseball is a skill. Am baseball I right or wrong fine. about yeah. that? Baseball. I mean, try to hit in a baseball, hit 100 miles an hour. That. Yeah, that's like yeah, and catching it, it and it's moving and catching. Yeah, you've got to make, yeah, you've make a sense. decision on that ball just about the time it release. It's released from the the, yeah. the pitcher's hand. It's freaking, and you're hitting a round ball with a round bat. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. it is. It, it, I mean, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I can name. I, I can. Train, I'd, what? What? I'd rather be a baseball player than a football player any day of the week. They're getting their brains beat in. In football, oh, yeah. so they get the baseball is a long. Think about it. You're, you, you baseball is a long career too. Year. Oh, not, not just a career; it's a long season. Yeah. These guys play yeah. every day with few days off, and they play beat up, and they play hurt. What is it? 100, 154 games a year, or something like that. 162. 162. Okay, I for somebody who doesn't know sports, I was pretty close. Okay. 154 is the old. Yeah. 154 is the old one. Okay, so it's 162 now. Okay. Um, which isn't that much more, but it's enough for them to make 10 days, 12 days worth of more money. And then they took away the double header, right? They used to have oh, double yeah. header. Yeah, I remember. Oh, you used so to get they took one away those, those. And now you get no days off. And, and now, so what they do is, I think, uh, they, I think it started last year where they, uh, the union gave them some extra days off. But to do that, they extended the season earlier. Yeah. It starts earlier. Which yeah. means you can wind up in a northern city and get snow or really shitty weather. So, yeah, the game is slow moving. There's a ton of commercials. Everything is sponsored. This pitching, mm -hmm. you know, this call to the bullpen is sponsored by this. This <laughs> spit on the mound is sponsored. Well, you know what by, they? You know what they also do? Have you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you ever noticed the technology behind home base? That it's like a green screen. And they keep putting up yeah, different that's, ads. That's during the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. do that for the network games. Yeah. Local games don't do that. They yeah, the local local games have the normal stuff. But yeah, if you go to a game that's nationally televised, yeah, or during the playoffs, uh, when you're at the ballpark, you see a green screen. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know they can they can change. I go to a ton of games because I'm a season ticket holder to the Reds. I'm a season ticket holder to the Bengals too because I I love fucking football more than anything. You know, so I mean. So can you explain uh, to me how it's played? Uh, <laughs> pro- probably not. You know, I'm ready to Jim learn. Jim Rice couldn't explain it to you. I'm ready yeah. to learn. You know, I mean, I lo- I love now the. I think the NFL game experience is better than anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, at it's, home. It's, it's, well, yeah. I mean, you know. I don't think it's so great. I don't think it's so great there. I've been, you freeze your ass off. Where's that? At the, when you go to at a football game, I went to Buffalo. I've been to oh, Buffalo. Oh, yeah, sometimes. You freeze your ass. I'm like, why am I sitting out here? Yeah, on, I don't, I kind of like, I don't know. I, I kind of like that part of it when it's cold. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it just depends. I mean, you know, I went to a playoff game in like I don't know, maybe 2014, 2013, and it sleeted like the entire second half. And it was, uh, okay, but, I, but I have, I have, I, mean, I, I, wait a minute. I, I have a major question to ask. Okay, and that major question has to do with the actual uh, sport of baseball in Houston, Texas. Now, when I first went to Houston, I got to know uh, Deanie Hoffines, who was the daughter of Mayor of, of uh, uh, Judge Roy Hoffines, who was the guy who started the Astros and the Astrodome. And they, she said, "We're having a big event tomorrow. Come see it. You're going to be amazed at what you're going to see." And what they did, they had a problem with the Astrodome. They built this indoor stadium because they felt the only way that they could literally make money uh, and to get people to come to games was to have an indoor stadium because it gets so fucking hot in Houston that nobody nobody wants to sit outside to watch a game. And they had some baseball team. I think they had the Astros, but they didn't have this dome. So they put up a dome. And with the skylight up above it, and they started playing baseball. Well, there was a little problem with that. The players didn't like the skylight because it was all this crosshatch of beams, and when a ball went high, they couldn't see it when it was coming down to catch it. So they decided they would paint in the windows. Okay? Fine. Until the grass started to die. Yeah. So what Do they were, use real grass yes, at the time? Yes. Yeah, so I'll they invented a thing called AstroTurf. It was yeah. made by Monsanto, and that's what they debuted the day I went down there, and I was one of the first people ever to stand on, on AstroTurf. And that became the thing for indoor stadiums. Now, I don't think, is, is the dome even there anymore? Is the AstroDome there anymore? They knocked it down. No, uh, I thought it was. I thought, I thought it was, still, it was there. still there last time I was. Is it? Uh, I don't it? know if they tore it down, but they they it's play in, in a in a they new park it. now. And then uh, I worked, I worked you know part time for the last probably 12, 13 years in the turf industry at a golf course. So uh, when they, they built the Diamondbacks' new stadium uh, in the late. 90s when they were building it they did a lot of work to be able to get grass that can basically grow indoors if they can just get it some natural light and some airflow etc um at least uh every so often and they've got it down now i mean uh, even the indoor stadiums now have uh you know real turf uh you know the the one in milwaukee has real turf arizona has you know so there's a few other indoors. I think I don't. Okay, uh, but, Seattle, but here, do do it, he, I can't remember, he, he, but. here, here's I uh, Tampa it. still is still artificial. Yeah, it's still artificial he, he, because he, it's he, spaceships yeah. that but, crashed here that they now play. Uh, but here, baseball. here's the question I have to ask. This was my big question, uh, and uh, that's uh, the mm-hmm. reason why I was um, uh, uh, getting to that. They then built an outdoor stadium and didn't start. Uh, stopped using the Astrodome. What do they do about the fucking heat at a game? Do people sit well, out there? The, the, the new one in Houston is uh, indoor. Is a re, it's retractable roof. Yeah, you can it gets hot the down there. They close it and and they climate control, and uh, they open it up during the nice weather. 
Okay, so during the nice weather, yeah. the grass can grow okay, and during yeah. the ba bad weather, yeah. they close. That's what I'm saying is, yeah. they tend to now they tend to close these roofs for games, and during non games, they like to leave them open, yeah, especially absolutely. like when the team is on the road for you know eight days, ten, twelve. But, uh, 12 my, days. my question also is, my question also is, how long does it take? For that, uh, for that, for that place to cool down once you close the top on it. Uh, you know, they've said on TV before during the broadcast because the Reds they used to be in the division with the Astros uh, when they were in the National League uh, Central before they switched leagues. Uh, I don't know, maybe what six or seven years ago. And the one in Houston is pretty good. I want to say it's only like the roof opens and closes and like around like 45 minutes or something which you know believe it or not i mean isn't bad. that's pretty quick yeah. and i i want to say they said something like eight hours or well something o over like in that. uh over over in uh lovely and attractive uh, queens uh they have a thing called the arthur ash stadium for playing tennis okay yeah. and it, i believe it has a retractable top and marjorie right. said that they closed it one day because it started to rain Hmm. And it only took a couple, it took maybe five minutes. It was pretty fast. Yeah, they've got some, they've, this sports stadiums yeah. are down to a science now. I mean, you know, yeah. because, I mean, I know Patrick, he's probably going to want to call in now and bitch. I know he's yeah. against that, you know, but, uh, and I told him I, he can't call tonight. So I told him I give him the shout out, you know, whatever the fuck that is. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Gee, but he can't call on tonight's so for, for, for the first night we've ever really ever talked about sports. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, I mean, they're, they're economic engines. I mean, you know, regardless of who pays for them, they're, I mean, they're economic engines. I mean, when they built the two brand-new ballparks in Cincinnati, you know, uh, in between them is stacked with business now. I mean, and that used to be, like, fucking shit town USA. I mean, no one went down there, especially, you know, it's like, you going to a Reds game tonight? It's like, take your fucking gun, you know? <laughs> you know? Wow. I mean, it was yeah. terrible. Yeah. You know? It was, first no? time I went to, I right. moved here 10 years ago. I went to Nationals Park the, when it first opened. Oh. And it I was went a there. That's shit a rough area. You, no, I went there, too. It was, a, it was, it was like in, a sub in the suburbs. Well, uh, it's, 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 it's down by the water, and it's really a bad area, but it has changed. I went there uh, for opening day two years ago, and I was shocked by all the business yeah, and it, all the, the buildings that are going up. And the business, I was like, whoa. The place yeah, looks it seems so like it takes them a while. Like, they build them, and the first, you know, year or two or so isn't too great. And it, once they start building up around them, I mean, they start getting all these high-end steakhouses and you know sports bars and i mean it, it, you know it becomes a destination you know i mean for i mean if you took the reds and the Bengals, for instance out of cincinnati i mean i i don't know what would i mean the fucking town would die i mean like, you know, it would be terrible i mean just because of you know like you were talking about you know if you play 162 in baseball that's 81 home games Okay, and then, you know, you get eight. Uh, well, actually, you get ten football games. You get eight at home, two preseason. That's ten. I mean, that's 90 days out of the year. That's one-fourth of the year where, you know, anywhere from thirty-five to 70,000 people show up, you know, every single night. They all park. They all eat. You know, they all do the deal. And if you have decent teams that make the playoffs, especially if you're a multi-sport city. Okay, but let me let me bring up something. Yep. Let me bring up something that actually is the main gripe of uh, of Tony. Okay, and that's the fact that the public, uh, the the cities, are expected to pay for these stadiums. Tony or um, uh, uh, oh, Patrick. 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 Yeah, Patrick. Yeah. He yeah. Want to pay for me too. Hmm? <laughs> I tell you, the truth, though, I kind of wish the Jets would have stayed. They wanted to put the Jets. By the Javits Center. I wish they would have did that because there's nothing down there. I mean, the Javits Center does good for the cons and stuff, but there's really nothing down by the water. That would have revived. Now they build the train that goes all the way down to the Javits Center. That would have been the perfect spot for the Jets to you, come back. You could, you could blame the Dolans for that. Oh, he stopped that? They that, that, put yeah. the kibosh on that. Because that would have revitalized that whole area down there. Yeah, and they're they're a little unique in the fact that uh, are they're the only ones I believe right that share a stadium. I don't think there's any any other sports teams that do. Now 
sometimes you have like a soccer team that uses, but I don't count them. Fuck that. That that don't fucking count. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, like two football soccer. teams. I don't. Does anyone else do that? I don't. No, I don't think no. So no, that's that's big in baseball for spring training complexes. You got a ton of teams that share a stadium yeah. for spring training, yeah. uh, which makes perfect sense. But uh, uh, it's just the Jets and the Giants uh, sharing a stadium is. Uh, and it's not even in New York, right? Yeah, but, Isn't but, it in New Jersey? Uh, again, New Jersey? Ag- yeah. again, what do you think about the fact that the cities mm-hmm. usually wind up paying for these places? For yeah, the when building the Cowboys these- built their new stadium, the city had to pay for like two-thirds of it. Yeah. yeah. And yet, nice yet who is too. benefiting the most from that stadium? And that is, of course, the people who own the team, right? Yeah. I would imagine so. No, I mean, guys, how many jobs can they create? I don't know. But if you lose the team, yeah, you know that's You'll not good. Right. You don't want to lose the team. You lose a lot of revenue if you lose the team. Yeah, I mean, that, so, I mean that's what I think. But. So aren't they aren't they holding your feet to the flame? Really, is well, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, but doesn't all business yeah. do that? That's what all business does. So Amazon yeah. wants to move somewhere, and everybody li- rolls out the red carpet for it, and it's just the way it is. You want to bring a lot of jobs to a location, you're going to give them breaks. Jeff has his hand up. Jeff. Yeah, I remember going to the Yankee uh, team uh, when I was a kid. And if you were like a Boy Scout or, or a kid, whatever, you could go cheap. Yeah. And But nobody sits in those places anymore. They're closed. In the center. What do you mean? Where? Well, uh, in Yankee Stadium. Where you mean? You mean down by the field? Yeah. Be- you know why? And here's the reason. I because all the, the tickets down there, they call it like that horseshoe area. Those yeah. are all what they. I think they call them legend seats. The problem is, it's free food and drink, so they're not going to let people down there. They guard it. You can't get in there without showing a ticket. So it's not even like, you know, the later part of the game, you know, maybe you were up in the second deck and you decide you want to move down. You're not getting those tickets are about 900 bucks a ticket for a regular season game. Wow. But it's unlimited food service to your seat. I even think alcoholic beverages are included in that. Yeah. Uh, almost every uh, baseball stadium. Talking has about that. The, the center of the whole facility. She went back the furthest place. Oh, you mean the bleachers? Yeah. And the bleachers. They don't yeah, have they bleachers. Still, oh, I sure they do. Oh, the sure. Yankee Stadium but has bleachers. It used to be a lot more. Remember? Um, maybe. I mean, there's still a pretty good bleacher section. And, and and you know what? The average ticket in Yankee Stadium, believe it or not, is only about 30 bucks. Are you, That's you the still average the, ticket. Hey, okay. Rob, do you remember yeah. the old Yankee Stadium? We used to always take my brother to right field. The old Yankee Stadium bleachers, they were like a pack. They had us in like an animals. You sat in right field. You couldn't go to any other place no on the right. park. My yeah, brother's it, like, it's like a jail out here. That's exactly right. Yeah, you, you go in and then you just go off by the tree. But it cost you right. two yeah. to get in. It was $2 or something like that, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know how he did it, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Tom Yamaguchi uh, it, it, uh, called in. And it said it missed no, call, no, no, but somehow, right somehow he got right on. I don't know how it happened. But hello to Tom Yamaguchi. How are you, Tom? Yeah, I thought you might be interested in a uh, Bay Area perspective on this. Oh, yes, absolutely. Consider I, consider I know as much about sports as you do. Oh, good. I'm, <laughs> so you explain football to me. <laughs> I know as much about sports as you do. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, I know how, I, I, as I've said before, I, I know how baseball is 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 played and i that's that, and that's not you know at least that's what i can do oh you see i'm out of sync now see thank you you made me out of out of sync okay, okay i'll hang up no don't don't do <laughs> that no we're so, ha- we're happy with okay. the way it is i know i've got it here so that i'm i'm i was using my camera there but now uh i i'm in sync when i've got everybody there by the way girlfriend does not like it when i do the close-ups on you people i don't either why? Uh, I like seeing the whole panel. I like seeing everybody and their engine. It, it, it gets too. It's it it gets nauseating actually when, when you're switching back and forth from picture to picture. It's just nice to, nicer to see everybody together. It, it's 
it's more an internet program than I think you're trying to make it a TV program. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying various things. I can do that, and because I can do it, I do it. You know, it's so. very it's very Brady Bunch. <laughs> oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I like that. You like but... the well, you like the Brady Bunch look, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, like Phil could be Johnny Bravo. I like it. I like it. Well, actually, you know, and they go, they get something, and they come back to their seat. There's, some, there's a, a casualness about it that's 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 missing in in formal TV. A little too slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. two more people call. We could fill up these spaces down here. I just uh, put up uh, <laughs> that thing so people can see. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, starting at the top, we have Charlie Wallace. We have Josh uh, uh, Wheeler. We have um, uh, is it, it's Wheeler, right? Am yes. I, yeah, I'm right. Okay. I don't know why I wanted to say Whedon. I'm thinking of Josh Whedon, the television producer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jeff Stein and uh, um, Albert. Uh, Albert. Oh. Rob Alfano. <laughs> By the way, Albert's going to be here in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Tony and to Tommy Amaguchi. Uh, what were you're you going to the WPLJ thing, right? We're going to the WPLJ thing, yeah, which I... Uh, I, saw your, I saw your posts on the New York Radio message board. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I get a little sick of that guy, to tell you the truth. Yeah, well, he's really opinionated. And then you, you, you were. I like your last comment, which is so ratings are. What did you say? Was it so uh, ratings, ratings are, are the most important thing, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it kind of is in a business, but well, I get in the where business, you're coming but, from. But what he was saying is, oh, it was iconic because it was very popular, and I, I'm, that's not what's iconic. I mean, hell, Hitler was iconic, and he was very popular. So I guess maybe he's right. You know. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I mean, when we use that as a substitute for the word good, you know, and, and what happened in the beginning when we were uh, a free-form progressive station, it was a very inventive format. And, you know, the fact that I could do a talk show in the morning and the other rest of the day people were playing music, but then they were playing whatever they brought from home, you know, they could play yeah. whatever they wanted, was a wonderful, wonderful uh Art form. Art form. Yeah. Then they came in and they started uh, doing a playlist and the whole thing, and it became just another music station. So because it lasted so many years, it's iconic, you know. But anyway, so yeah, I'm going to this thing, and I don't, yeah. I, I don't know why, because I was there at the very beginning, and all the people who were going to be paying attention to each other, the people who came there later, you know. So. That's true because uh, you think about it. You you worked there when Zachary was there, and he's gone. Well, I was there before Zachary got there. In fact, the reason right. Zachary came to WPLJ was he called me up and said they, they want me to go to work at the WPLJ, and uh, should I do it? And I said absolutely, and so he took the job. Cool. Uh, yeah. And it could even be that I recommended him as well. But I love Zach. I just Zach was the best. Yes, uh, Tom. Oh, uh, so I guess the subject's changed, and I can't talk about what I called it about. Oh, wait, 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 wait. go ahead. I, okay. I absolutely you were talking about, want you to. You were talking about the, the public financing of, of staves, and I agree with, with, with Patrick. And I, I think more and more, and especially here in the Bay Area, you're seeing more and more stadiums for private financing, starting with the, the Giants, which was uh, well, AT&T Park. Now it's Oracle's uh, got the rights to it, so it's Oracle Park. Uh, the uh, the 49ers down in Santa Clara, they financed their stadium. Uh, the A's uh, are are working to uh, to get a new downtown uh, ballpark in Oakland. They're going to be totally privately financed. And what and, and so what's happening with the Raiders is they said. We want Oakland to buy to to buy us a new stadium, and Oakland said, "Screw you!" And so the Raiders are going to Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is going to buy the stadium. Yep. So, so that was that was my comment. It's more and more, it's it's private financing, and it should because because these teams don't have any loyalty anyway. I mean, the 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 Raiders didn't have any loyalty when they went down to L.A. You know. Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, that's a lot of lost revenue for Oakland now. If once they leave, no, they've they've got the A's, 
Yeah, but all winter long during the warrior. But all in, all winter long, how many home games? Eighty thousand people showing up there. That's all lost. Hotels and restaurants and all that business is gone. Well, well, you know, you know, you know how I feel about it. Uh, the 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 Raiders can go fuck themselves. And here's the reason they can go fuck themselves. Studies have shown that it, there's really no well, no real economic difference. Well, no, but. There, there really is no economic benefit to cities. Fuck, They've done studies that But fuck that the Raiders. Just, fuck the Raiders. They had a um, um, uh, a franchise in San, in the Bay Area over in Oakland. And they have people who love them. And then they said, fuck you, we're going to L.A. Yeah. Yeah. And they went to L.A. and said, fuck you, to, 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 oh, to Oakland. And then yep. after a couple of years, they got tired of L.A. And they said, fuck you, L.A., we're going back to Oakland. And now they're saying to Oakland, fuck you, Oakland, we're going to Las Vegas. And my feeling is any city that they want to go to should say, fuck you, Raiders. You just have no loyalty to the home where you mm-hmm. the home base where you are, you know, mm-hmm. Vegas has been trying to get a football, any sports franchise for a very long time. Well, they don't have to want to have to go too far to bet on them. I was going to say that's, that's here, wild. Here, by the way, right let me let bet. me bring this up as another possible topic of what we're talking about here and and this is kind of an all a very interesting discussion on sports but that my argument has always been that the main reason especially in football that sports exist in the first place is for the betting business i don't think it drives it it drives it it, it yeah yeah i mean it is it is the betting business that is the driving force behind a lot of these sports football especially Oh, yeah. uh, uh, baseball to I guarantee you, Alex, if I was going to run this by you, and you guys yeah. can qu- uh, think about it too. Can you imagine if they just legalize sports betting? It's in Jersey now. I wonder what just the amount of money that flies in on gambling, if they tax the shit out of it, we can probably put that towards health care. Uh, yeah, well, they were supposed it? to put the lottery towards education. Towards towards, yeah. And never happened. It didn't. It, I mean, what, what, did, what happened with the lottery? It, did, it didn't go to it? I thought it did. Oh yeah, why are why are the schools in so much trouble? The lottery does great, doesn't it? Yeah, man, people buy lottery tickets, and and we yet we have schools where the teachers have to buy supplies, and and uh, and they and every year, parents are asked. When I was a kid, it wasn't like that, but you know, you hear kids. Well, we got to bring paste, and you got to get paper towels, and you got to bring, you know, all these things to school because the schools don't have them. So, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> Somebody steal the money in the board of ed. Well, yeah, of course. Not about the board of ed, but the lottery. Well, yeah. Wow. Just so you can see, I am watching a baseball game. We've been talking about that all night. Well, uh, but any and please don't do that because any uh, recreation. Yeah, you're gonna of, get in trouble. Any game. publication, reproduction, or re- retransmission, or other use of the picture descriptions and yeah. accounts of this game without you'd be experience. banned from the air forever. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I, I well, they give. Me, I wish they would give me the phone number of the uh, commissioner of baseball, so I can call him and see if I can get permission for you to turn your camera onto your screen over there. <laughs> By the way, uh, your background there, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, uh, the, the question is, uh, with your background, uh, what are you sitting on? Isn't that some kind of a sports thing you've got as a as a that you're sitting on? The chair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a, actually, it's just a regular recliner that just has like a big uh, blanket throw thrown yeah, over it. But is the, is the blanket a sports blanket? Is it for some yeah, sports Yeah, it's, a, it's a, like a Reds comforter. Oh, okay. All right. So, I move, I, well, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, I, God, this show has a theme tonight. This really works out really fine. I'm, I, uh, yeah. I'm liking this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the... The room I'm in is like this. This is my sports room. So yeah, I used to call from the office, but now I usually sit down here and watch the games and stuff every night. So now that I have it built. But you know, I mean, I, I honestly believe that sports exist for the servicing of the of uh, these days for the servicing of the betting industry. Um, and you uh, listen to sports talk on the radio, and every commercial is for gambling. Mm-hmm. FanDuel.com and yeah. all these places where you can bet. We'll give you your first five. You, in fact, one of them says you can bet. The first mm-hmm. bet is a $500 bet. If you lose, they'll give you your money back wow. on your first bet. <laughs> well, maybe I should just try it once, huh? 
<laughs> well, the, what they do is, so you're going to give them the 500. They'll they'll give you back your 500, but it goes on account, which means you have to spend it again. Or you so can't. Give you, it's you, basically a do-over. You can't, ju- like you, you, your, you can't just say, send me a fucking check, asshole? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Oh. You, don't, you, don't get, you don't get the check. They give you a. Uh, they give you your money back in the account, but it needs to be gambled again. Yeah, it's like a credit. I think yeah. casinos usually do the same thing, like the first time you... If you sign up to be a member of their email club or whatever, you get a twenty dollar, you know, swipe card you can put in the slots or whatever for like twenty bucks or something. That's not bad, but not five hundred. Bro, well, yeah, right. Gee, yeah, what, absolutely. What happened? What happened to Tony? Look, there's an empty chair there, and there's that horrible wallpaper, <laughs> and there, there's a, there are those chintz lit and linen kit, the um, um, linen uh, curtains. And I'm just wondering, you know, if he's in the other room saying, oh, mom, look what I did. I didn't mean to kill her. You know, I mean. <laughs> you mean he's in the fruit cellar? Yeah, the fruit cellar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. yeah. What a but, but speaking of that betting, I mean, I think that's what made that, uh, you know, controversy over that fucking horse race, that Kentucky Derby so crazy was. I can only imagine the people that oh, thought yeah. they had won, like, money, and yeah. then, you know, I don't know how long the thing took, I guess it was like a half hour later or whatever, you know, they lost it all, and then there were, uh, and then on the flip side, there were some people, you know, who, I think I read a story in the Washington Post something about a lady who didn't think she'd won anything, and then they changed the decision, she won like $250,000. It was a long shot that, the, what, right. the, yeah. it was a huge right. long shot. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the long shot was how much? It was a, 150 to 1 or something? Something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. But, I'm but not here, sure, here's but my question. Was... Here's my question. They had the race. Uh, they declared the winner initially. So when do people go and collect their winnings? Immediately, or do you have to? Works. Typically, yeah, you go immediately. I, you know, yeah, you as soon as you. Well, most people do. Okay, you, you know, so suppose while you're, you're getting, went, while you're betting your next race, you 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 cash in. So. Okay, but suppose people went and cashed in on that race, and then all of a sudden, as you say, a half hour later, they uh, they, they 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 changed who the winner was. Well, let and, me ask. Did, this, they, they, did they, everybody they, have to come back and return their money? It. it so it, usually know. when that kind of thing happens, it's up for review. And while it's up for review, nobody can oh, okay. cash. Yeah, out, right? maybe that's, you know, what happened. I don't I don't watch it. So I don't know if it like happened immediately after or, uh, you know, I, if there was some kind of appeal or how long it took or or whatever. I just know that, that you know, I can only imagine there were some people who, you know, thought they'd won money and then, you know, didn't. And some people who didn't think they got a dime and then all of a sudden. You know, yeah. like I was saying, the one lady I saw an article about, she won like two hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. All you would have had to what? All you would have had to do was bet a hundred dollars on that horse, and you'd get one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, am I right? Uh, no, something like yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, you'd have to bet a thousand dollars to get a hundred. Yeah, right. But it, it, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, she won a shit ton of money. Just you know. Because of that change decision, but yeah. I don't watch horse racing, so I don't I don't really know how long it took or anything. But I'm just glad it's over, so they stopped fucking talking about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man! So I mean, now, I think there's another one in a couple of weeks that they run. It's like you know, the like, Belmont, the Belmont, yeah, yeah, and then, right. And then there's and then the, the one at Saratoga. Season. Yes. Don't we have we have a sports show on this network? And I don't think it ever <laughs> sounds like this. <laughs> You know, uh, he's a big Giants fan. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Well, they're losing for nothing. So, you know, suck but, it. By the way, but they got, they got what I think is one of the greatest ballparks in America. Where? Okay. Uh, uh, the Giants. Oh, yeah, that's have, a, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. And it, 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 I mean, you're sitting there and the back, the literally the, the background for this stadium is the yeah. bay. Yeah, and yeah. and the boats going by and so on, uh, and it's gorgeous. They have McCovey Cove where people take their boats and just hang out there and wait for balls to fly yeah. out of the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the game I'm watching now. So Cincinnati's in San Francisco. That's the game I just showed you, but I show you again. But 
we'd have to pay a fine. You'd have to get the permission of the commissioner of baseball and fuck the commissioner of baseball. <laughs> you know. Who who is the commissioner of baseball now? Uh, what's uh Rob Manfred. Rob Manfred, yeah. 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 But uh, uh, Seelig retired. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, and well, I'm thinking about Peter Uberoff. Who was Peter Uberoff? Football, right? Oh, he was football? a football. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, baseball? Well, that's Maybe a long thing. time ago. I don't know. Long Peter time. Uberoff? He was football. Was he? He was the commissioner well, of football. Had to have been a really long time ago, though, because Paul right Tagliabue was the commissioner for forever. And then since then, it's been. Uh, now I'm Googling. Here comes Tony What's back. Is your mother still alive, Tony? Actually, I wanted to see the last two minutes of the Warrior game, Golden State. Oh, fuck you. I'm wow. sorry. Fuck I'm rooting for your Bay Area. I, oh, I like my, my bad. You're Warriors. right. Baseball from 1984 to 1989. Yeah. Oh, he was that's the that's sixth commissioner. My, my mother's sleeping. Who was baseball? Uh, Peter uh, Ubroth. He was he baseball. Was the oh, the of baseball. Okay. okay. All right. So, I, hey, I know something. Now I can keep Miami again for another year. <laughs> You're doing pretty good with the sports, Alex. Well, you know what it is? I found out that I maybe know more about sports than I'd like to think I know about sports, <laughs> especially about baseball, because I really do love baseball. I mean, I, I love the, the history of the sport, the nature of the sport, the romanticism of the sport, you know, all that. It's, it's an amazing sport, and it has an amazing history. Football, fuck you know, it, you know. I'm you know. oh, sorry. Uh, basketball, eh, bunch of, you know. I, I mean, I like all the sports, but you know what I like, too, about baseball? And even though I'm a Yankee fan, I like listening to the Met game because I enjoy Gary Cohn, Rob, and uh, Keith talking when they tell the stories and they give you the insight, like Hernandez. Yeah. Some of the, like, you know, they, the announcers make it really I'll good, too. I'll tell you an right. interesting story about sports, though, me and sports. Uh I uh, worked at WMCA, and at that time, uh, they had as a talk show host for the station a guy who later went on to be their play-by-play -play guy for the Yankees, John Sterling. Mm -hmm. He's still a uh, play-by-play. Uh, is, is he still the there, play-by-play -play for the Yankees? He's yeah, the Yankees. I like his voice. Uh, and one night, John Sterling was late getting to the studio, and of course, I was the show before him, and they said, could you do the first half hour of the sports show while Sterling gets here? And I'm thinking to myself, oh fuck, John, I don't, I don't know anything about sports. I mean, you, were you nervous? nervous? But I said, okay, no, I wasn't nervous. So I said, okay, oh. I'll do it. I bullshitted my way through a half hour. I wish they would have told you. To the point good. where people were saying, man, you're great at sports talk. And I'm, I'm just doing things like, when somebody would call up and go, do you think the Yankees are going? How do you think the Yankees are going to do this year? And I'd go. Well, they 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 got a pretty good team this year. I think there's a chance that they perhaps could win the pennant. Well, that's what they wanted to hear anyway. <laughs> You're right. I would have. Oh, thanks. And, I can go home and watch the And game. I bullshitted my way through a half hour and walked away, saying to myself, "Anybody can do sports talk, even me." You know. I love the sports. But story, the thing yeah. about John like Sterling, I'll tell you a story about John Sterling. Uh. One night, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a control room. Somebody's doing a show in, in the main studio. And um, I hear this voice off. It, 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 we, what you had was you had a control room, and then you had what was called a sound lock area. And then you had a door that went into the studio. Well, the sound lock was open. And I hear Sterling say to me, so what do you want to do tonight? Oh, wow. And I looked over at Sterling, and I said, uh, I don't know. What do you want to do? And he wasn't paying attention to me. And then he, he kept going on. Well, he kept going on. Well, I don't know. What do you want to do tonight? Well, I don't know. He talks to himself. He talks to himself. I mean, in the looniest, craziest way. He wasn't talking to me. Oh, my God. You think he's nuts? Well, that doesn't sound like sane, does it? It's a bit of a character. That does character. sound yeah. Easy. He, he, Somebody's uh, called it terrible too. He's losing his eyesight. I think. Is he really? That's why. That's far it's caught. I mean, John, you can't even see the bone in him. Yeah, but he went on. He's to eight, dude is probably eight, hard to judge he's, what he's up. He's in he's his. Still, eight. He's eighty years old and he's still doing play by play. Well, I, I'm seventy nine and I and stuff. I was a kid back then. Okay, so he has to be in his eighties. Yeah, he absolutely. is eighty. He just hit eighty. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Remember and, he, year, and he hasn't bro? missed a game in like 20 years. In 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 all the time he's he's been calling Yankee games since mm -hmm. I want to say 1990. 
mm -hmm. or 91, yeah. and he hasn't missed a game. His house burned down. He didn't yeah, I was going to tell you, the, the house did. burned down in the city or something, remember? Yeah, his house He wasn't burned. in it, though. No, yeah. And Michael Kay was talking about it. Yeah, he, was yeah. Okay. And he was out talking outside the place, talking to himself. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he was doing his famous his famous Bernie Williams home run call, Burn Baby Burn. Oh, yeah, against Baltimore. I remember that. I used to. I had. I used to. I used to. Okay. The TV okay. So so let's 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 bring up another topic. As long as we're doing sports tonight, yeah, it's got some okay. people watching it. Uh, since Bernie. we're doing sports tonight, uh, great sports play by play guys. Who who are some of your favorites? Harry <laughs> Carey. Huh? <laughs> Harry Carey. Uh, you liked Harry Carey. <laughs> yeah. uh, he had a famous phrase, didn't he? That I, I can't remember what it was now. What was it? I can't so remember. There's some phrase like when there was a home run. He yeah, would, yeah, I don't know if yeah. it was. Uh, what was his? Who was uh, the guy who said, "Let's play too"? Was that an announcer? That's Ernie Banks from the Cubs. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There were some old old guys. Uh, like when I grew up, when I was a kid, the, the big guy in sports. I I don't know if he was a play by play guy, but he was a sports reporter. Was Bill Stern. And it turned out, years later, it came out, Bill Stern was a heroin addict. Really? Yeah. Wow. Maybe yeah. he did it to keep him going. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know. You know who I like? I like Al Michaels. Al Michaels? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I remember him with the Olympics and baseball and boxing. Is he still and, doing and, this? And Tom, is, is, is is, Tom, you're sitting there going... Uh, <laughs> This doesn't. Even really... if Tom doesn't like the Giants, I love that. No, part, no, no, Tom, no, no. It isn't a question that he doesn't I, like the Giants. I, He's like me; he doesn't know about sports. But, but, uh, give me credit, Tom. Does it sound like did? I know something about sports? <laughs> I have a confession. I have not been inside of that uh, giant stadium. Really? Really? Have, oh, I it's think nice. I've been oh, on it's... the outside of it. I've seen from the outside, but I've not been on the inside. It's lovely. It is oh, it's a great. Love. Yeah, that's my favorite park that I went yeah. to. It, it's a beautiful yeah, I park. A well, I, what I like, I'll tell you what I like, and they've done them in recent years, they're doing them more and more, are the baseball only parks. In other words, the ballparks. Right. Exactly. That are only meant for playing baseball. They're not that's converted the, into. That's what, the, that's what the A's are trying to do. I mean, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, was the old stadium that was, you know, they shared with the Raiders. Now the Raiders are moving out. They would have a they would have a, a ballpark stadium just like the Giants have, and and uh, they're going to build it um, as they said right there on the on uh, by Jack London Square in, in downtown Oakland, and uh, uh, hopefully get built. Uh, they're the uh, Longshore Workers Union is um, uh, put up a stick against it, but it looks all like all the other AFL CIO unions uh, came out today in, in support of it, including yeah. our. Uh, their uh, state assemblyman uh, down there, Ron ba Ron Bata, yeah. Rob Bata, yeah, and uh, so I, I hope they, they I hope they can build it, yeah, I hope yeah, they do. yeah. But what they have is a terrible place to play baseball. Sight lines are terrible. The it's like a big bowl, and you sit so far from the game. There's so much foul yeah, I, territory. Oh, what a horrible. Yeah, I've been there. I've I've actually been to a couple of baseball games there, and. Uh, and I've, actually, I've been to more concerts there than the, the baseball games, but um, but yeah, you're right. It's it's not it's it's not the nicest place. Right, right. Uh, but by the way, Alex. Yes. Uh, Beta Breakers is going to be on the 19th. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it's I guess I'll have to. I guess I'll have to see if I can get a job again. Where where where, <laughs> where, where are this? Another where? Emmy. Where can I find the strippers? You know. <laughs> um, so does Rob? Rob, do you? Uh, are you? Uh, are you a fan of the Yankees manager? Or uh... you know, with the, in this day and age, with all the analytics, yeah, I, I don't think he's much more than a cheerleader. Yeah, you know. Well, I'm just curious. By... I mean, because you know, Aaron Boone. He, you know, he played here in Cincinnati for a long time, and. Uh, you know, he only played those last, what, you know, maybe two or three years with the Yankees center. He spent most of his career here. I'm I just really familiar with him. I just didn't I mean, know. I have that iconic memory of him hitting that home run. And, yeah. Uh, oh, it's just great. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, you know, I don't know what, what kind of a real man now. that manager is I mean, really, uh, you know. They, today, managers are, what do they do? 
Yeah. They get they get the blame when the team loses. Yeah. And but who knows because of all the analytics today, you got all the geeks, all the guys that run the computers who were the nerds in school. Now they're running baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I don't like it. Really. Yeah. yeah, my my, my, no my, God, I, my other the, the other the, the, the other sports question here, of course, has to deal with Kate Smith. Oh, who, that's uh, just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, uh, now you being a Yankees fan, they banished her from uh, from the seventh inning, right? That's uh, right. Yeah, that's when they would play America. The, God bless America. God bless America. Her her version of God bless America, but because she sang, that's why they created darkies or whatever she the song that, from she, the 1930s. But she did that in a Broadway. Yeah, right, the song. She, I mean, she sang it. She right. sang she it sang in a Broadway it. show that I know, that it's she was ridiculous. Pa- that she was paid to be in. Okay, right. it's ridiculous. But I mean. Here is he, he, number one. You say it's a version of uh, America the Beautiful. What is it? Uh, God bless America. God bless America. Yeah. Uh, you say it's a version, but quite frankly, it's the only one you would ever play if you had to play a version of God bless America. You know. So. Yeah, but now they have the organ player play it. Well, oh. here's the, here's the thing about you know. I said this the other night. I was talking to my friend Shecky, who happens to be a big Yankees fan. Again, oh, listens, loves the Yankees, listens yeah. to every game, owns every baseball card ever made. Okay, chewed a lot of gum in his time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he said that the thing trouble with uh, with 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 doing this to Kate Smith is they forget what a patriot she was. She raised a billion dollars for the war effort in World War II. Oh, Man, wow. that's when a billion dollars was a billion that's dollars. Right. But a billion dollars she raised. And wow. when you want to think about her as, well, she's racist, though, there was a, a performer by the name of Josephine Baker who was a, uh, she was in France and she was a chanteuse. And she was an American who had to go to France because as a black woman, she found it hard to get gigs, okay? So she went to uh, France, became a huge international sensation in France. And she came back to the United States and was looking for TV shows to be on, and nobody wanted her except one, Kate Smith. And she put her on over and over and over again. Does that sound like a racist to you? No, but you know that we live in this crazy world right now, so yeah. we just live in a crazy world, and we're rewriting history is what we're doing. What we're doing... You know, is, all, all of a sudden, she's a racist for being in a play. In 1932, she sang a song called the, Why Darkies Were Born, and they were born to t- till the fields and do this yeah. and that. It's not, a, it's not a terrible song, but <laughs> certainly by today's standards... Bad, <laughs> To by today's stand, well, no, but it, by at that time the term darky was considered fine and okay. I mean, I, say what you want to about it. You have to say you're living in a time and place. Uh, yes, Tom. What? I uh, got some breaking sports news. Oh, really? What? The Warriors have won Game Six of their playoffs against the Rockets tonight. tonight. Really? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Who are the Warriors? They're actually moving from the Gold State. We're actually moving from Oakland to San Francisco to another privately financed, uh, uh, well, facility. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Chase Center. Yeah. And so they're financing. They're going to have a whole bunch of concerts. By, by the there. way, do they play any games out of Keysor Stadium anymore? No. So, but no. it's still there, I've isn't been, it? I've been in Keysor Stadium, though. It's still there, and it it's used to be there. home of the San Francisco uh, Seals. Seals. Yes, that was the team. When I was growing up, that was the ba- local baseball team with the San Francisco Seals, and they didn't were... Da- didn't Joe DiMaggio pay- play for the he Seals? He started with the Seals, and the Seals was, a, I guess, a farm team for I don't know who. Maybe no, they were part of the Pacific Coast League. Yeah, but that didn't matter. Sometimes they were used as farm leagues, farm teams as well. Got it. You know. And I think also uh, Boomer, um, what's his name? Uh, the pitcher for the Yankees was also played on that team. Uh, yeah. David Wells. David Wells. David Wells. I think he played on that team. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, 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 DiMaggio was, you know, started with the Seals as well. Um, you know, a funny, funny story. Um, when uh, uh, Bobby Slayton used to tell this story. 
it's not true, but he loved to tell the story. He told it like it was the truth. He says, one day I'm walking through North Beach, and I bump into Joe DiMaggio. And as a matter of fact, Joe DiMaggio mm -hmm. lived right around the street from me. You know. Really? Uh, yeah. So he says, I was, in the, I was in the marina, and I bumped into DiMaggio. And I said, how do you feel about the fact that Pete Rose may beat your record? Or I think it was Pete Rose at the time. Oh, he had to he, was going right. to he had like record. 44, I think. And, and, and Di he said, DiMaggio looked at me and said, I don't care. I fucked Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, uh, that's uh, the that's story he liked to tell. Uh, let me see here. Oh, what do you know? It's funny now. When I bring people in, it says call missed, but we have Kevin here. Hold on a second. Let me give him a slot. Oh, we'll give him the number eight slot, okay? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, wait a minute. I got to go here and go to Kevin. Uh, let me see here. Um, what what does he come in as? He comes in as hog rider. That's it. Do you ride a hog by any chance, um, um, uh, do you do you ride a hog, uh, Kevin? Yes, sir. You do. <laughs> Look at him. Of course, of course he does. Well, I mean, I guess he has to. It's required <laughs> to have that kind of beard, and then have to, you know. Yeah, it goes like this in the wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not bad. What was that? Oh, Irv Jackson wrote. Uh, what did he? Uh, how about? And then I lost it. Let me see if I get it here. How about Russ Hodges and the Giants? How about Russ Hodges and the Giants? Bye <laughs> bye baby. Bye bye baby. Yeah, right. I, I get it everywhere. I get it up here too on my watch. Zerb Jackson's <laughs> message. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, I uh, I grew up when. See, here's one of the reasons why I was stunted uh, sports wise is because when I grew up, I grew up in the Bay Area. And at that time, you didn't have the Giants. Yeah. And you didn't have the, the uh, 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 Oakland A's. You didn't have any baseball teams. We had the, New, the San Francisco Seals, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. So you didn't really pay attention to baseball. If you lived in New York, and I always told Shecky this, I was always very jealous of him because he grew up in New York. And in New York... He was able to really fall in love with their local teams. You know, you were he was always a Yankees fan. There were kids yeah. who were Dodger fans. Part of the great thing about being a Dodger fan, if you lived in Brooklyn, is these guys lived in the same neighborhood with you. Yeah, you know? that's right. So they weren't rich. As a matter of fact, you know how the Dodgers got their name? Them bums. No, 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 no. They were called the bums. That was their nickname. But how they get the yeah, name the Dodgers? Bums. The Dodgers. Probably Dodgers. That's correct. Very good. Tom, who knows nothing about sports, gets the point. There were trolley <laughs> cars. There were trolley cars out there in Brooklyn, oh. and people would, you know, run across the street dodging them and so on. They called them trolley Dodgers. And so when they started the team, they called them the Dodgers. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. A little history, see? From there, I'm, I'm going to get to keep that Emmy. Okay. <laughs> You're earning it tonight. Yeah. You're earning it. But uh, now we got a lot of good teams in the Bay. Yeah, but so I didn't grow up with any baseball teams, and so I didn't have that love of baseball that you would have if there were teams, and yeah. and and um, so I that's the reason why I never fell in love with sports, either that or football, because for football all we had were like some college teams. You know, you had Stanford, you had uh, UCL, you know, University of California. But other than that, you know, the, the sports was not predominant. So my father took me to the ballet and, uh, you know, the symphony. Uh, and that's what I grew up. I grew up as a homosexual. So, you know. <laughs> well, now, you, how long have you lived in the Bay Area, Kevin? So all my life. All your life. So when yeah, you... I was how, born now, how, in San Francisco. And yeah. So how... Moved up the, Peninsula in 50, uh, 59. Okay, so how old are you now? Uh, 60. I'll be 62 next month. Okay, you were born in what year? 57. Yeah, so, so you, you only know baseball and, you know, you only know yeah, the, I, the Giants. Yeah, I watched Willie Mays, Juan yeah. Marichal, Willie yeah. McCovey, all yeah. those guys. Yeah, I don't know from that, you know. And so I think it's that when you're growing up, if you don't have that, that 
thing going, you know, where you become hot for a team and get behind yeah. a team. Uh, yeah. you, you, you just don't have the same love for it. But I was on as top I of that. Mm-hmm. My dad had a gas station in San Mateo and we had uh, uh, Willie McCovey. <clears throat> Oh, I, he froze, I think. Yeah, he's frozen. He froze. He froze. But he'll always be there, you see. Our, his <laughs> wife had an orange oh, pinto, oh, and we... he had a gold Cadillac. Oh, oh I see. Okay, now, you, now you're back. You were frozen there for a moment. Who, me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, reason. oh. Yeah. So, yeah, I was saying that uh, Tom Haller, the manager of the Giants, Yeah. he was a customer of my dad's, mm-hmm. and I serviced his gold Cadillac, and his wife had an orange pinto. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I said, how does that work? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. So anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, that, that, oh, yes, uh, Tom. Yes, Tom. I was going to say that uh, that Kevin's wearing his Sharks uh, shirt there. Uh, How how, how the Sharks do tonight? They didn't play tonight. They play tomorrow. But I've been to, uh, I went to the Game 7 the other night. And I went to the game seven uh, against Vegas as well. Well, Kevin, eat your heart out. I don't know how hockey is played either, but I'm a hockey. I do have I do have in my uh, storage unit, uh, which is being looked over by Damian Chaplin uh, out in California. I have a hockey stick signed by every member of the Sharks. Awesome. Yeah. If you want to get rid of it, just let me know. Uh, I'll will it to you. I don't care. I, you know. I worked on the I worked on the stadium. I, I delivered all the uh, the, uh, the luxury suites and the cabinetry for the um, dressing rooms because we stored all that equipment when they were building the stadium in San Jose. I'll tell you. Tell you so what. I drove my truck right down onto the ice before it was even built. I'll tell you what happened. Pretty um, cool. I had a girlfriend uh, who uh, was into, I guess, into baseball. I used to take her to the baseball game out at the Oakland A's. I knew Wally Haas, who owned the A's. So he would always give me free tickets. And the first time he ever gave me a free ticket, it was all the way up at the very top of the stadium with my back against the wall. And I yelled and screamed about that when on the air. And he got back to me and said, well, they shouldn't have done that. You know. <laughs> so the next seat we had was right over the uh, dugout, okay? And she brings her her baseball mitt with her. She wants to catch a ball, but she doesn't catch a ball for the whole game, and she's very depressed about that. Well, a little bit later, a couple of weeks later, maybe a year, half a year later, I have some, I can't remember the baseball player. It was a major one, uh, Rice? Uh, my, who am I thinking of? No, that's a football Bait? player. That's football. Uh, uh, who, who, was, who was the baseball player? Anyway, I had a major baseball player on the show, and he brought a baseball mitt and signed it for me. And all I ever got from her was, how can you have a baseball mitt signed by him and I don't have it? So I said, shut the <laughs> fuck up, and I gave it to her. You know, I said, I, I don't want it. I, if it's going to cause me that, this much grief, I'm not a, that big a baseball fan, so I gave her that, uh, that, that mitt. And I hope she has we'll it to this baseballs. day. What? what? People just die for baseballs. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. I had season tickets to the A's for 10 years, or weekend season tickets, and got one ball out of all those years, sat in the same seats, and it was <laughs> off of uh, Bob Welch, foul ball, Donnie Witt, I think it was. Yeah. Donnie, yeah, I think that's what his name was. Shortstop, no name. I gave the ball away. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so Wally Haas... Uh, uh, Used to give me seats finally. And I got, got good ones finally. But uh, the first time it was like I, I was bragging to my girlfriend, hey, I've got free tickets to the, uh, because I know Wally Haas. I know the guy who owns the team. And then we're, yeah. we're, we're being guided up the stairs, you know, <laughs> by, by, by a Sherpa, you know, uh, who, who's taking us up to the top of the stadium and we're up against the wall. And I go, what the fuck? I, and th- you can't even see the people on the on the field. They're like little dots running around. You know, it's like you're playing pong. Uh, and uh, uh, she gave me a bad time for that. So I went on the air and gave him a bad time for that. And he called me and he said, "I'm sorry. He said, that should have never happened." And every time, every other time, I went down. Now I'll tell you what I did once. 
Mm-hmm. And this one you guys are going to love is that they said, we'd like you to throw out the first pitch. Oh, wow. At a, oh. At a, at a, at a, a uh, A's game. So, uh, because again, I know Wally. And, and he says, would you like to throw out the first pitch? Sure, I'd love to. What do I know about pitching? Okay. This is my pitching oh, yeah. arm. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it wiggles a lot. Anyway, I say, how so, difficult can it be? Uh, so, oh so they yeah, walk, it don't look like a long way for it, on it, TV. It, but it doesn't yeah. look like a long way when you're even in the stadium. Yeah. They walk you out to the mound and they keep walking you out to the mound and they keep walking out the mound and you get out there and you look at home base. That'd and it's beat. like it could be in San Francisco. You know, it's, it's that <laughs> it's that far away. And quite frankly, I throw a ball like a girl. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know. So, so I figure I got to do my best. And I take the ball and I throw it. And it gets to home base. And I hit the catcher right in the crotch. <laughs> so I throw it the first ball. Yes, Tom. I say, actually, you know, a couple weeks ago, um, San Francisco, uh, San Francisco's first uh, woman uh, fire chief uh, retired, and uh, was it Joanne Hayes White? Yeah, and uh, they had a big retirement party at the at the stadium, and and she actually threw out the first pitch, and she did fantastic. She hmm. was real. I mean, she was right right Wait, on. Are, are you saying this to make me feel bad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of pressure in throwing out that uh, first pitch. Yeah. It's, it's pressure packed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's, it's a long distance. Take Absolutely. It you know, uh, and, and these guys are out there doing it every day, you know, and striking people out. And, you know, they're terrific. They're terrific. I just, I, you see, here, when we've been talking about sports today, what's the majority of sports we've been talking about? Baseball. Baseball. Hey? We, we talked about football for a couple of minutes, and I said they're a bunch of galoots, and that's it. Who gives a fuck about football? <laughs> you know, this is just a bunch of guys who get a lot of money and get to beat up their wives. You know? I mean, really. They're a bunch of spoiled fucking brats. Whereas well, base- apparent- What? Apparently, apparently, lots of people give a shit about football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they don't mind that these guys get, number one, brain injured. And then they beat up their wives. You know, there's a lot of violence. They're playing a very violent game. And we expect that when they go home, they're going to turn it off. Okay? And they don't turn it off. You know, and That's what I like about easy. hockey. That's a tough game. What? You can throw Hockey it. is fun because they get so damn tired. But they're, they're, they're screaming around. They're, they're like basketball players. They're six foot five, six foot seven. Screaming around 35 miles an hour, trying to catch a little rubber biscuit at yeah. 100 miles an hour, and they got weapons. <laughs> they got these big sticks that they could break your neck with. Yep. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you something. If you have never been to a hockey game, it is the you, best. you can't appreciate how hard they hit when you hear them hit those boards. Put the board. It like, is the holy best. shit. It it's is just. Best. Violent. I used to love the Blackhawks. Well, you know, there was, there was a time when hockey was considered kind of like wrestling. Uh, it was considered kind of phony because they would keep getting into these fights with each other and stuff like Are that. Are you sure you're not thinking about um, roller derby? No, I'm thinking about <laughs> hockey. Roller derby, uh, I admire because it's a very uh, real sport. No, uh, anyway. Uh, um, Alex. Uh, well, yes. You know the old joke um, is is I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, the point was that that a hockey uh, <laughs> they kill each other. Uh, used to have the reputation as being kind of phony, and it it uh, it gained uh, a better reputation as the years went on, and now is considered a pretty solid sport, you know, um, in Canada. So anyway, uh, Errol, our our. Yeah, our team's lost four teeth already so far in this series. <laughs> now, why do they lose the teeth? Is is that because hey, they, uh, want to, one, uh, they want to have the ability to vote for Trump? Is that the reason they lose their teeth? <laughs> Pucks to the face. Uh, Pavelski took a uh, a puck to the face and scored with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. First game. Oh, wow. Scored right off his face. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And then, and then went to the dressing room. 
got his face sewed up. No, wait a minute. A whole and went right back in the game. Say something uh, so we can so we can see it. Uh, he's holding up a, a New York. That's uh, a New York Islanders puck. There I you got go. That. I used to cover the Islanders when I awesome. worked in television. Yeah. And uh, and you get hit in the face with this. Yeah. Holy shit. They freeze <laughs> them, too, before they go on the ice. Yeah. I mean, I just can't imagine what it'd be like to get hit with that hockey puck. I met Brian Trottier uh, just last year. From the oh, you did? Yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Got, why do they? Why one, do they? Two, why three, do they, four, what, five pucks right above me? Right why now. do they freeze them before the game? They slide better. Oh, is that the reason why? Yep. Yeah, but they must also hurt more if they hit you. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, they, yes. I mean, it yes. Uh, Tom's got his hand up. We're getting towards the end of the show. Yes, Tom. Yeah, the thing. You know, I, I there's something I noticed also about baseball players. More and more of them are wearing these helmets that have this piece that comes out and, yeah, and yeah. protects their jaw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 That's something I've new I've seen. I haven't, I haven't seen that until this year. They've had that boot before. Yeah. It's, it's been a couple years, of years. Yeah. 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 And shin guards, too. Wow. Yeah. They really no, changed batting. the game. I mean, that was a rough game. Now you can't have a collision at home plate anymore. You can't hit the guy at second anymore to try yeah. to break up a double play. You know, they're, they're if you're a horse, you can't run. If game. you're a horse, you can't run in front of another horse. Jeez, what does it come to? <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, there's our theme. You realize we've spent the entire night talking sports. <laughs> the franchise MC is going to be pissed off at. Oh, <laughs> this is our. This is our, I'm. I'm throw, I'm. I'm sending this off for another Emmy because it is video <laughs> after all. You know. Anyway, I want all of you to kind of. Uh, I want to say good night to you. First of all, good night to Charlie Wallace. Good night to Josh. Good night to Jeff. Good night to Rob. To Tony. To Tom. And to Kevin. See, I get all the names fine. As the years go on, it's going to get worse. Uh, anyway, I want all of you to give a big wave goodbye to the people out there, and uh, I will uh, wave back at you. Okay, there we go. There goes our citizen panel. Okay, uh, I want. I got to get back in sync here uh, for my main camera, uh, which uh, I. There we go. Now I'm fine because I when I hang up on everybody, uh, that's uh, that's what happens. Let me see here. Let me also. Uh, come on, come here. Let me go invisible and let me turn it off so that the next show, which is the uh, uh, the uh, intersection with uh, Jack Bishop, uh, can use the Skype line. So stay tuned for that program. Hey, listen, that's it for us tonight. Uh, we're off until uh, next Tuesday, and uh, hopefully this equipment will keep working just as well as it did tonight. And, uh, uh, you know... Uh, whatever. We'll see you uh, right after uh, Damien does his program, The Exchange, at 9.30 Eastern, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. At 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, we will be doing our program, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>